Welcome to Behind the Velvet Ropes. Do I look good today? Well, I better because it's Fashion Week in New York City. So if you want to see what I'm going to be wearing next season and what you're going to be wearing next season, stay tuned. Bill Blara's Nielsen. It's his first collection, so I'm very excited. I hope you're as excited as I am. I'm gonna go backstage. Okay, so what's up with the hair and makeup at House of Blast? Oh, it's Alec. Alec Weck, hey. Her face is getting gorgeous. How are you? We just saw her in Florida. Jet set. How nice. So what are we doing to Alec today? We're just making a little smoky, the eyes with Alec. You know, Alec's such a natural beauty. You know, <laughs> even me being a makeup artist, I want to use so much makeup and I cannot because she's so beautiful. So I just made the eyes a little smokier. I love the sort of slant she has and I'm going to make the lips very chocolate with a touch of red, just a cast of red, very classic makeup. And I want the cheeks a little rosy for Alex to show how happy she really is. She's a happy girl. She's oh, a yeah. happy model. Which is very happy yeah. beautiful face, you know. Hair, hair, it's all about hair. I see we're using spray today. I love spray. This is good stuff, too. Strong. If there's a windstorm, your hair does not move. I like it that way. So, what are we doing at Blast for Hair? Well, everything is gonna look like short hair. Like short? Yes. So even the girls who have long hair, is gonna look short. Alex. Oh wait, I was talking about the two, it's two Alex, I love it. Why are you teaching Alec how to walk? She knows how to walk. I'm What's up teaching, with that? I'm not teaching her how to walk. I'm just showing what she needs to do. Oh, OK, because she knows how to walk. No, they all, well, that's why they're here, because I made sure they got girls that could walk. <laughs> Say, I want to walk. Show me what to do. Do you want to walk very simple? This is very simple. I think the basics just from point A to point B. I want to learn how to walk like, like Alec. Well, let me see you walk first, and I can then help you from this point Is that right or wrong? It's a bit over the top. <laughs> That's you. All right, it's you show me. Show me. Okay, you want to be really, really simple. When you get yeah. To point A, point B. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, point A, very simple. Not bad. Is that good? Yeah. All right. That's so, I got thumbs up? Thumbs up from you? <laughs> He's tough. <laughs> Where's Lars? Lars is working hard today. Hey, how are hey, you? How are you? Good. So nice to see you. Well, nice to see you. Very chic today. Oh. Very chic. <laughs> well, are you nervous? This is your first collection for the House of Blast. So how are you feeling? I'm very nervous. <laughs> you don't look it. Well, I am. I am. I'm very nervous. It's, I'm very honored to, to do the collection today. But of course, I'm nervous. Well, get over it, because we're here. We're going to make you less nervous. So how are you going to continue with the style of Bliss? Because you really don't want to change it that much. So how are you going to take your interpretation and make it, you know... Make it new. New and fresh. Well, I think... I think using some of the traditional fabric that Blast used, some of the colors, but maybe take it a little forward. Make it, mix it maybe with a new fabric, 
mix it with a new color. Um, I'm using a lot of elements that Glass used to use and which are signature for him, for him and his collection. very ladylike clothes, so you're going to continue in that vein? There's a few pieces, but they're also very modern clothes. They're very soft. They're still tailored. They still have a construction, but they are very contemporary. They are very easy to wear. They are, and very elegant and still into American classics. You have very good pedigree. You work for Galliano, one of my favorites. Who else? Name names? Brag a little bit? <laughs> Come on! I worked for uh, Christian Lafarge for nine years in we Paris love him. for the Haute Couture. I worked for Oscar de la Renta at Pierre Balmain for his couture collections. And before moving, as you said, to, to New York, I was working for Galliano and Christian Dior. Amazing. You, that's yeah. the best. So why decide to work for another house as opposed to having your own collection? Well, of course. It's, it's, I mean, it's very exciting to, to do um, under your own name, but I think I'm, I'm very honored to be able to continue the tradition of what Mr. Blas has been doing for years, and I'm, I, I'm, I'm very excited about it. In the beginning, there's a lot of pantsuits. There's pants, jackets. I'm using tailored fabrics like menswear fabric that Mr. Blas used to, to do a lot. Um, then when I'm going into more cocktail, it gets short, it gets sexy, it gets bare backs, strapless. Um, and of course in the evening it's, it's a lot of colors and, and, and long gowns. There is even some fuller gowns that I think we haven't seen so much lately, but they're more like a modern shape. collection you only did about 27 pieces yes. so it's really tight it's very tight well the time frame was very short too we had three and a half week to put this together that's very quick yeah, usually very it's quick. six months from one show to another three weeks is like nothing in yeah. terms of design so of course I've been driving like 25 million people crazy to put everything together but as I say it's a smaller collection but I think that people will get the ID and um, what the message is and then in September there will be a big show in the tents. Well I'm excited I guess I'll let you go back to work. <laughs> so all right thank you so much. Thank Good you luck. so much. Thank you. Okay we're going up to Cynthia Rowley one of my favorite designers. She's in this building upstairs so let's see we're going up. Hey guys. Hi. He's so nice. Lars. I like that guy. This is my cameraman, John. Very cute, right? You never get to see him because he's working the camera. This is credential, but you're cute, right? You think you are anyway, don't you? <laughs> so does your wife. So that's all that counts. Right, let's put this back. He's like credentials today because it is fashion week. All right, we're going to meet, where's Cynthia? Behind the velvet ropes in the house, I love it. It says, welcome. Welcome and thank you. Oh, look, fabulous clothing. Look how pretty. It's like fairy clothing. I love that. How are you? Thank you for doing this. Of course. Well, you look great. You know what the best part about having your show on Monday is? Like by Thursday, you can already be wearing this. Okay. You are so ahead. <laughs> so you're you're like two seasons ahead because we're in, we're actually spring is what's in the stores now, but this right. is like next fall, right. and we're actually it's fall now. I'm very confused. This makes me dizzy. <laughs> Fashion it doesn't is, matter anyway. I think people really do have their own style, and I think that. You know, you can't dict. Designers can't dictate anymore. You used, used to. Used, used to, to definitely. It was always like, you know, like when Elsa would come and she'd say like, skirt lengths this season, you know, and it was like a definitive answer and color, and definitive answer, and 
Now it's not really like that. I think it's more personal style. Designers having their own personal style to, you know, and, and being true to yourself. And Well, what's happened with designers, which you're obviously one of them, you have your own store, a few of your own stores, you're doing your shoes, you're doing bags. So now it's more a designer does a total look. So if, if someone out there loves Cynthia Rowland, they want the whole look. Yeah, they, they want could, your idea. But also, I wouldn't expect someone to wear the whole look either. See, I no. do. When I like a designer, I want the shoe. I mean, this shoe looks so good with this dress. Thank you. So, but this is last fall. Well, it's and this is this fall. Well, it's working. <laughs> it's working. So I'm getting this season. You seem to be more somber. Like the colors were a little darker, a little more serious. Yeah, a little bit more serious. In contrast to the three ring circus on the runway. Yeah. But. Um, <laughs> It seems like just a tiny bit more serious time. But I think you still have to have some whimsical things thrown in there. I was really interested in a lot of really tailored, more classic kind of things like the men's trousers, but then doing these little things to trick the eye. Like how the shoes were one color when you were walking this way and turned another color when you were walking the other way. Sort of just things to trick the eye, but still like really classic. Well, you always have a sense of humor. I love that blue coat with the little, I'm looking right this way, the blue coat with the little, what do you call these, like like dots on them or whatever. What is this? <laughs> See, I'm not a designer. That's an official fashion term. Dots. dots. No, they're like little it's like balls. A little dot, and like, yeah, I mean, like that's so fun, but yet it is a classic tailored jacket. Tailored shirt. I know that for me that's really fun because I never do stuff like no, that. No, it's like so unexpected. Like, that's the unexpected twist. So I guess the message here is always expect the unexpected from Cynthia. I think that's true. Your shapes are always Sexy, slimming. Sexy, I like yeah. that. It's hard to do sexy, I think, sometimes. Like, you want to be so practical. Like, I think, sometimes I'm thinking, okay, am I going to wear this to work? Because that's, since that's the only place I ever go, is work. <laughs> she so works I, hard <laughs> for the money. <laughs> so I think, am I going to wear this to work? And then, you know, I'm not exactly going to be strutting around here with big slits and, I you know, decollete. Design. You're a practical thinking designer too. A little bit, but I really think I try to do stuff that makes you feel good when you wear it. You know, like changes your mood a little bit. How many stores do you have now? Like uh, a lot. In America, five. That's a lot. You just and where you you're also global. You went yeah. in Japan. Yeah, in Japan, a, a few in Korea, and some coming in Hong Kong. And like, is it like a laboratory? Because you can actually put stuff in stores that you might not put in like you know a major department store. You yeah, can we put in your store. I put in tons of stuff, and I put stuff like right off the runway. Like sometimes we're like, okay, these are Jody kids' shoes, you know, and you know we put in accessories that we've made for the runway and put them in the store. Did a uh, two tone, but real, really subtle. So like burgundy and navy. So one leg is one color, one leg is the other, and that's a practical thing, but a way of doing it and having it be sort of impractical with the two tone. But um, I also am, in that way, kind of uh, adventurous because I'm always wearing sandals like until there's snow on the ground and bare legs and everything. I don't care. But yeah. I'm on the subway. In I've never seen you on the subway. I take the subway. Oh, come on. I you, you know the concertina player? Yes. The, guess Do where I found him? Where? On the number six train. No way. That's right.
Well, I want to thank you so much, Ms. Rowley. Thanks for doing this. Thank you. Oh, Thanks for stopping by. What a treat. Do you guys want coffee or anything? It's so early. They don't get to eat. I know we're here. We're working hard for you guys out there. No, we got to move on. We got to go next to where we? Douglas Hannon. Oh, cool. Fabulous collection. Fabulous. Oh, cool. So, all right. Well, we'll see you Good. there. See you. Come on, Bradford. We're leaving. He's chatting up the designer. Chatting up the designer. We got to work. Get out. 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 And I was obsessed with Cynthia. I had like 14 pairs of her crop trousers last spring. You did? Literally. I was obsessed. That's what I was talking to her about. You bought them? You paid good money for them? Well, my parents paid good money for them. That's when I was still in college. Oh. Mommy and Daddy. Mommy and Daddy. Hi, Mommy. Oh, How many pairs are you? Like 14, maybe. I still have them all in my closet. I have more crop pants than I have regular pants right now. Excuse me, you know, this is my this is show. show. This is my show. Like, he is the lowly assistant today. Actually, he's not lowly, we treat him good, but. He carries my bag, carries my stuff. <laughs> I love that. Hey, how are you? It's fashionistas in the house, okay. Hey, how are you? Ooh, see all the fashion people. All right, we're going just right next door. Hi there. What floor is Doug Hannett on? Six. Thank you. Sixth floor. Okay. Coming up. Behind the velvet ropes in the house. Ooh, look, jewelry. Do you guys like jewelry? I know you do. You know, there's a new website called gem.net that is very cool. It tells you all about jewelry. It has a horoscope. It tells you about gemstones. I'm on it. I'm giving advice too. So you know what? You should log on. Gem.net. Because I know you want to see more of me, right? Right. More jewelry. Horoscope. There's even an interactive game, which is very cool. Ding dong. Ding dong. Behind the velvet ropes is here. Hi there. You go in. Behind the velvet ropes in the house. Woohoo. Good morning. Good idea. Now, we want him now. Designer, designer, designer alert. I'll just sit, because I've been working hard already this morning. Oh, yeah, that feels good. Hey there, how are you? Good. Sit. I'm always calling him. I'm up there, I'm so excited. I'm coming up, just like get ready for me. This collection was so beautiful. Totally luxe. The most beautiful fabrics, cashmere, leather. I mean, it was just exquisite. And I like this very austere shape, but very luxe. I think that's the contradiction that really works. You did stay with your kind of darker palettes. Right, right, because I think that that's always more chic. You know, everyone asks for color, color, bright color. When it comes down to it, they wear black. <laughs> they wear more somber tones. Uh, that's, that's just more chic. Well, I know that your philosophy is building upon what you already have from Douglas Hannett. Like, so you don't have to get rid of any old stuff. You just keep on, you know, getting... It right. Yeah. Well, I feel that, um, you know, a collection should evolve and should develop. And um, I'm doing something original. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't look like what is on the runway. It doesn't fit in, which is a hard pill for a lot of people to swallow. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm really developing a collection from within you know, with, with my eyes. And when you're doing something original, it takes time to develop and it's not something that you just throw away the next season and you move on and it's time for, you know, pleated skirts and Mary Janes. You know, it's something that, it's an aesthetic that I continue with. silhouette's got closer to the body. 
Before yeah. it was always very sensual, but and I still really love fabrics. I love suede and jerseys draping over the body. I think it's so sensual when something's not extremely tight. This time I went closer to the body. I was using um, menswear fabrics like pinstripes, but in no way did I cut them in a menswear way. I wanted to go very feminine. So everything is very seamed, very feminine, very sexy, but strong. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, uh, what you see this season that you haven't seen in the past. That's where I've come. I did use copper. Copper was the metal that I'm, I'm really into right now. And the reason that I chose the copper really is I did so much silver last season and I didn't want to do gold because everyone's doing gold. And I just love the way that the copper looked with the navy. And finding the right copper was the trick. It had to have the right amount of warmth to it. So I like a copper that's more pink rather than a copper that's orange. When clothing is uh, very subtle and, and uh, you know, every seam matters and every undertone of a color and especially my philosophy that everything in the collection needs to work with everything else mm -hmm. because I don't sell a suit I never sell two pieces to get you have the choice Wait, what do you mean you don't sell a well suit? I, I would never sell the jacket with the matching skirt I'll sell it that way if you want to wear it that way but I give you the option of putting it with a leather pant with a motorcycle pant you know with a uh, beaded skirt um, I don't believe in selling something as a um, set. I think it's old fashioned. I really hate tradition in any way, which is another thing when you're an American designer, they want you to do that cashmere turtleneck that you can buy at the Gap, and I refuse to do that. I won't do a notch blazer. Um, every piece is special, every piece is thought out, and I don't offer anything basic. You're looking good. Thank you so much. I Thank love this you. collection. It was so beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, we're leaving. We're going to meet another Cynthia. Cynthia Steffi. It's a Cynthia kind of day today, too. All right, we're leaving. Look at all these beautiful clothes. Love that. Ooh, love that. So you think they're going to let us in the main lobby? They might make us go through the service elevator. I hate that. I look good today. They should not let me going to service. I'm wearing Zhang toy again. Very chic. Cynthia Steffi, where, where, where should she be at? 21, thank you so much. How are you? I know you for like 20 years. Do you, do you remember me? I know you for at least 20 years. What, do you use the freight? Oh, come on. Oh. Oh, I'm so disappointed. I look good today. Hey, we have to use the freight elevator. Oh, I'm so insulted. Oh, hey. Everybody's sewing. Cynthia. Patterns. I guess we're kind of coming in a sneaky way. Oh, what's going on in here? Fashion. Oh, it's just Cleaning up now. Cool. After the show. So this is after? Wow. Look, people placing orders. Look at all this press. Very happening. Look, from Sex in the City. Look, Vogue magazine. That's pretty groovy. Paper magazine. I write for paper magazine. Hey, Laura. Hey. How are you? Great to see Great you. Great to see you, too. Thanks for coming. I love. Great. The show. Great. I'm so glad. This is the first show that you've done in a while. It's actually the second show I've ever done in my life. Mm -hmm. um, it's the second runway show that I've done. I did one in 97, and uh, I launched a luxury collection with this, this uh, show. So it was, it was but why'd you wait so long? Because you've been selling. You always sell. Well, things are, things are going well. Um, we launched the Contemporary line in 97, and that's a lower price collection. I've been really focusing on that. You know, the most important thing is that you do sell. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's, um, it's always that piece that doesn't sell. It's the expensive piece with the contemporary line. So by demand, I made a luxury collection to actually work off of that.
very luxe. I mean, you used a lot of fabulous fabrics, like very rich leathers. I saw a lot of like cashmere kind of wools. Yeah, there was cash, a lot of cashmere, a lot of uh, mink trims and things. Your colors, a lot of green. Loved green, the seats, and loved green. And uh, there's there's one green actually that was sort of the inspiration. There's this face dyed uh, fur actually that was very very interesting. It was sort of the color palette in the beginning of the green. It was also kind of femininely tailored. It was very wearable and elegant and tailored, but yet not, like there was a twist to it. Well, that's great it to hear because that's... Did I get that right? I just, you like, absolutely got that right. Am I babbling? Right? And I love to hear it from you because you see everybody and that's exactly... I do. That's exactly what um, I aim for is, is to have the clothes be wearable, but still very cutting edge and very sexy and appealing. It's like there was some more fitted and then some just a little roomier. I really aim to um, not please everybody because you can't you please can, everybody. You can. But it's very interesting what's happening to our customer in the contemporary world in that there's a lot of mother-daughter shopping. I was thinking that, you know, this line would be geared toward 20-something to early 40s, but the age range has gone way below and way above that. And a 16-year-old girl is buying my stretch jeans, and, you know, her mom is, is buying the sheared mink collar coat. So there, there's a lot of crossover, and I'm surprised at the young girls, I mean, the, the girls under 20 even, who, you know, are looking for that quality, and they're looking for that luxury, and they want to look older. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a wonderful mix of uh, women of many ages. Your show is past. It was standing. We had a nice standing. crowd. We had a nice crowd in the back. So are you happy? Great. And I'm so glad you were there. Um, I was there. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> oh my god, she's doing a show. I have to be there. <laughs> Thanks for joining me on this fashionable edition of Behind the Velvet Ropes. Come back next week for more fashion, style, glamour, and designers. All right. <laughs> Thank you. loves jewelry more than I do. Absolutely no one. That's why I'm working on this new website called gem.net. Editorial, horoscope, gems, everything that you need to know about jewelry. And you can even go shopping. So tune in, log on, gem, G-E-M dot net, N-E-T. Tell them Lauren sent you.